Welcome to my talk. I'm going to talk about Sekia Software Leasing. This is a joint work with Fuyuki Kitagawa and Takashi Yamaka from NTT. In this work, we achieve Sekia Software Leasing schemes for pseudo-random functions and subclass of evasive functions from the learning with errors assumption. As an additional feature, we can extend our scheme to secure software leasing with classical communication. Let's start with what is secure software leasing. Secure software leasing is a quantum cryptographic primitive. There are a lesser who has the software and the rest. A central authority generates a common reference string. The lesser generates a protected software by using a secret key. Then the lesser sends it to the rest. The rest can run the software on the legitimate platform, that is, they can get an output for an input. At some point, the lessee returns the leased software to the lesser. Then the lesser checks whether the returned software is a valid leased software or not. After the lessee returns the leased software, they cannot run the software anymore. That is, leased software must be a quantum state since we can easily copy classical information. There are two security notions for secure software leasing. One is finite term security. In this security game, an adversary receives a protected software. Then, the adversary tries to generate possibly entangled bipartite states. Both of them can be used to run the leased software. The adversary sends one state to the lesser as a returned software and uses the other one to run the leased software. Finite term security guarantees the returned software is not valid. Or the adversary cannot run the leased software on the legitimate platform anymore. Here, the adversary is forced to run software by an honest evaluation algorithm. The other notion is infinite term security. This is stronger than finite term security. In this security game, the adversary also tries to generate possibly entangled bipartite states. Then the adversary tries to use both states to run the least software on the legitimate platform. Infinite term security guarantees the adversary cannot use either of the two states to run the least software. Anans and Laplace presented the notion of secure software leasing and instantiated it for subclass of evasive functions by using public key quantum money and the LWE assumption against quantum adversaries. Their scheme achieved infinite term security. Some concurrent and independent works improved the assumptions, but the function the function class is limited to subclass of evasive functions. Aronson et al. achieved secure software leasing for broader function classes, but they still need public key quantum money. Ours is the first secure software leasing for broader function classes from standard assumptions. 
In our paper, we give constructions for pseudorandom functions and subclass of evasive functions, but our construction can support public key encryption and signature by combining the technique by Aronson et al. Our construction is based on the clean framework using software watermarking. We can instantiate the watermarking part with standard, standard assumptions. Aronson et al. concurrently and independently presented a similar technique based on watermarking. We note that some works achieve security where pirate software is not forced to run by honest evaluation algorithms. Lastly, our construction can be achieved only with classical communication. That is, we do not need to send quantum states. I explain the high-level idea for how to achieve secure software leasing. The scheme by Anans and Laplaca is as follows. Software is modeled as a classical circuit. We somehow generate a protected circuit in the classical way and connect it to a quantum state. When we return the least software to the lesser, the lesser checks the quantum state part is valid. Then the lesser also checks the protected circuit part is correctly connected to the quantum state part. If both are valid, the returned software is valid. When we run the least software on a legitimate platform, platform does the same check as the lesser. It checks both the quantum part and the connected part. What is the quantum part? We use a publicly verifiable unclonable state for, for the quantum part. This is also known as public key quantum money. In public key quantum money, a central bank has a secret key and publishes a public key. The bank generates a quantum money by using the secret key. We can verify a quantum money is valid and gets its serial number by using the public key. The adversary gets a quantum money and tries to make a copy of it. The security of quantum money guarantees the potentially entangled two quantum states are not valid with the same serial number under the public key. Unclonability of public key quantum money and circuit protection part imply finite term security. The scheme by Anans and Laplaca achieves infinite term security but ours achieve finite term security. So we focus on finite term security in this talk. The third protection part consists of input hiding obfuscation and simulation extractable NISC, but the detail is not important here. The adversary generates two states. One is for software check and the other is for learning software. Suppose each software passes the verification. First, we consider the case where the public keys for the quantum money part are the same in two states. If the returned software is valid and we can run the other software on a legitimate platform, then the adversary must break the, the unclonability since both quantum money states are buried. Second, we consider the case where the public keys for the quantum money part are different in two states. Then the adversary breaks the circuit protection part. The detail of the circuit protection part is not important to understand our construction. 
The crucial observation here is that Lester can use their secret key for checking the returned software while we need a public key to run the leased software on the legitimate platform. We found that we do not need the full power of public key quantum money for finite term security. A crucial tool for our construction is two-tire quantum lightning, which we introduced in this work. First, we review the notion of quantum lightning. An authority generates a public key called Volt Generator. Anyone who has the public key can generate a quantum state called Volt. We can verify a quantum state is a valid bold for a serial number by using the public key. The adversary tries to make a copy of a bold. That is, the adversary generates a potentially entangled two quantum states. The uncolonability of quantum lightning guarantees one of the two quantum states with the same serial number is invalid. Quantum lightning is a stronger primitive than public key quantum money. There is no provably secure construction so far. We introduce two-tier quantum lightning, which is a relaxation of quantum lightning. In, in two-tier quantum lightning, an authority generates a public key and a secret key. Anyone who has the public key can generate a vault as quantum lightning. There are two types of verification in two-tier quantum lightning. One is full verification, which needs the secret key. The other one is semi-verification, which needs the public key. So anyone can execute semi-verification. However, only the, the authority can execute full verification. In the security game, the adversary generates potentially entangled two quantum states as quantum lightning. In two-tier unclonability game, one quantum state is checked by full verification using the secret key. The other quantum state is checked by semi-verification using the public key. Two-tier unclonability guarantees one of the two states with the same serial number is invalid. Two-tier quantum lightning perfectly fits for finite-term secure software releasing. The lesser can check a returned software by using full verification with the secret key. Although the lessee does not have the secret key, they can check a leased software by using the same verification with the public key. Now, let's see our construction. As we see, we can use two-tier quantum lightning instead of public key quantum money for the unclonable state part in secure software releasing. In addition, we can achieve two-tier quantum lightning from the SIS or LWE assumption against quantum adversaries. We will see a construct concrete construction later. It is easy to see we cannot use two-tier quantum lightning to achieve infinite term security, since the lessee should not have the secret key. In the blueprint, we need a circuit protection part. We use software watermarking for this part. Let's briefly review what is software watermarking. Software watermarking can embed an arbitrary message into software. 
watermarked software is functionally equivalent to the original software. We can extract the embedded message from the marked software by using an extraction key. The security of software watermarking is unremovability. The adversary receives a marked software and tries to remove the embedded mark from it. Unremovability guarantees if the software output by the adversary preserves the functionality of the original software. Then, we can extract the message embedded in the marked software from the software output by the adversary. We can construct secure software leasing by combining software watermarking with two-tire quantum lightning. A lesser generates a bolt and serial number and embeds the serial number and the public key of two-tire quantum lightning into software by watermarking. So the software is connected to the bolt. When a software is returned, the lesser extracts the embedded public key and serial number and checks the quantum state part by full verification with the secret key. When a lessee runs software, they extract the embedded public key and the serial number and checks the quantum state part by same verification with the public key. Precisely speaking, we need Mac to formally prove the security of our construction, but I omit it for simplicity in this talk. Please see the paper for the detail. We can prove the finite term security of our construction by using two tire unclonability and unremovability. The adversary generates two states. One is checked by the lesser and the other one is run on a legitimate platform. Suppose the first one is valid under full verification and the second one is valid under semi-verification. At the blueprint, we consider two cases. First, if the extracted public keys are the same in two states, the adversary breaks two-tire unclonability. Second, if the extracted public keys are different in two states, the adversary breaks unremovability of watermarking since valid software must preserve the, the functionality of the original software. Note that this argument is oversimplified since we omit the mark part from this intuition. I explain how to instantiate two-tire quantum lightning and watermarking from standard assumptions. First, anyone should be able to extract an embedded message from marked software since we need to extract it when we run software. That is, we need publicly extractable watermarking. There are publicly extractable watermarking signature and public key encryption based on standard assumptions, but we need I.O. for publicly extractable watermarking PRA. In fact, we do not need standard watermarking and can use relaxed version of watermarking since pirate software is required to run by an honest evaluation algorithm in secure software racing. In relaxed watermarking, an extraction algorithm can check whether a circuit follows a legitimate format or not. So the relaxed watermarking is much easier to achieve than standard watermarking. We instantiate such a format check part with NISGs. 
we can achieve publicly extractable relaxed watermarking PRFs from the QLW assumption. Please see the paper for the video. To instantiate two tire quantum lightning, we use noisy trapdoor claw free permutation by Brokersky et al. There are two permutations over n bit string. It is hard to find a pair of inputs such that their outputs of the two permutations collide. Such a pair is called claw. However, if we have a secret trapdoor, it is easy to find a claw. A bolt generator is permutation F. To generate a bolt, we construct a uniform superposition. Then, we apply permutation F to the registers and write the result into the third register. Lastly, we measure the third register and obtain an image Y. This Y is the serial number. A bolt is the collapsed state after the measurement. So the state is a uniform superposition of the claw. The full verification algorithm inverts Y by using the secret trapdoor and gets the claw. By using the claw, we can verify a quantum state is a uniform superposition of the claw. The same verification algorithm uses only the permutation F. It applies F to a quantum state and checks whether the image is equal to Y or not in the superposition way. Suppose one bolt with serial number Y passes the full verification, and another bolt with serial number Y passes the same verification. By measuring the first bolt, we can get X0 or X1 with probability half, since the bolt must be a uniform superposition of the claw. On the other hand, we can get either x0 or x1 with some biased probability from the second bolt since its image is equal to y. That is, we can get both x0 and x1 with probability half from these two bolts. So two-tire unclonability holds due to the security of trapdoor claw free permutations. We can also construct two-tire quantum lightning from the QSIS assumption, but we omit it in this talk. We can extend the two-tire quantum lightning construction to one with classical communication by using the idea of bolt to certificate by Radian and Sata. We can generate a classical certificate that guarantees a bolt was collapsed. We use a, we use a certificate verification algorithm instead of a full verification algorithm. By using the classical certificate instead of bolt, we use only classical communication. We can instantiate the bolt to certificate mechanism by using the technique by Brakersky et al. and Radian and Satas. We apply Adamard operator to a bolt and obtain a superposition state like this. We measure the registers and use the result as a classical certificate. We can verify the certificate by using pre-images extracted from the serial number Y. Two-tire two unclonability immediately follows from the adaptive hard core bit property of trapdoor claw free permutations. Please see the paper for the detail.
It is easy to achieve secure software releasing with classical communication from two-tier quantum lightning with classical communication. The lesser generates a public key of two-tier quantum lightning and sends it to the lessee. The lessee generates a both and its serial number and sends the serial number to the lesser. The lesser embeds the public key and the serial number to software by watermarking and sends the marked software to the lessee. The lessee can run the software if the vault does not collapse. When the lessee returns the software, they destroy the vault, get the classical certificate, and return the classical certificate to the lesser as an evidence they destroyed the vault. If the lessee destroyed the vault, they cannot run the software anymore. Let me summarize my talk. We construct finite term secure software leasing schemes for PRFs and subclass of evasive functions from standard QLW assumption. We also achieve secure software leasing with classical communication. Our technique is based on the clean framework by two-tier quantum lightning and soft software watermarking. That's it. Thank you for watching my talk.